The DJI Osmo Mobile 4 is a smartphone gimbal following on from the hugely popular Osmo Mobile 3. I think the success of the Osmo Mobile 3 must have been a motivating factor in DJI bringing the next model out so quickly. In this video, I'm going to go through the unboxing, setting up and run through of the main features, including the Mimo app. I also look at the difference between this model and the previous model. Is there a big difference? The first difference to note is that DJI have abbreviated the name from Osmo Mobile to an easier to say OM. So this is the OM4 rather than the Osmo Mobile 4. This time it looks like DJI have decided to worry less about undercutting the competition in terms of price. So this gimbal is a few dollars more than gimbals like the Xiaon Q2 and it's currently almost twice the price of the Hoem iSteady X. But the mini tripod is included this time, whereas with the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, the tripod was an optional extra or you could buy the set with it or you could buy the set without it and there was about a $20 difference. At the moment at least there's no option to buy the OM4 without the tripod and reduce the cost. There's an identical bag and wrist strap plus charging cable. This is new, a see-through plastic alignment guide for helping you position the magnetic ring holder should you wish to attach it permanently to your phone. So then there's the magnetic phone clamp and the magnetic ring holder. That's the main change from the OM3. This idea to use magnets to attach your phone to the gimbal. And there's two ways you can do this, with a clamp or with the ring holder. So if you don't want to attach a ring holder to your phone, then use the clamp. I think I will use the clamp for now at least. There's also this riser pad for small phones. So if your phone is too small for the clamp and isn't gripped tight enough, then add this pad. If not, you may place this in the drawer of forgotten cables and other electronic accessories, just in case. And then there's this little pouch of items, which is for sticking the ring holder to your phone. Again, if you don't want to stick the ring holder to your phone, you know which drawer to place this in. Just like the Osmo Mobile 3, the OM4 is a foldable gimbal. In fact, the gimbals are almost identical in appearance and design, apart from the magnetic clamp for mounting a smartphone. So you can now unfold your gimbal. There's three stickers you'll probably want to remove. This one just tells you which way to place the phone in the clamp. But on the OM4, they've cleverly added a little graphic here to remind you. Uh, this sticker says to be careful not to pinch fingers and ensure accurate alignment when mounting. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by pinching fingers, but anyway. And this one just leads you to the Mimo app via a QR code and also lists the functions of the trigger. Before you install or boot up the DJI Mimo app, mount your smartphone. I'm just going to use the clamp, even if you intend to use the ring holder, probably best to use the clamp for setup purposes anyway. If all goes well, you can attach the ring holder if you want to use that later. It would certainly make mounting your smartphone to the gimbal very convenient, but then no fiddling with the clamp every time you want to mount it. But then you have to consider if you're going to use a case. Because if you attach the ring to your phone and then you want to use a case to mount a lens, things are going to get complicated. Using a case, and this one is the regular moment case, it sits fine in the clamp. That's pretty tightly gripped. As the sticker said, when you connect the two magnets to mount the phone, make sure they're aligned properly. You can see there's a little recess here which fits the clamp. Now make sure your smartphone camera is on the left, but then flip the phone so the camera faces away from you. Like with the DJI OM3, if you use the clamp, your smartphone needs balancing. 
at least you will help the motors if you try to get the phone balanced as well as possible. That said, if you are using the ring holder, you can't adjust the balance anyway. The position of your phone will be fixed. The assumption is, I presume, that you won't be using any heavy extras like lenses or microphones. But if you are using the clamp, then the phone's position can be adjusted as you would with the OM3 clamp. Basically, move the phone left to right in the clamp, but also the clamp's arms can be adjusted up and down a little bit for perfect balance. If you're adding extras like lenses or microphones, you might want to add some counterweights. These are from Ulanzi. The OM4 can take the counterweights on the side of the clamp, same as the OM3. If you don't already have the Mimo app installed, then go ahead and install that now. There's a version for both Apple and Android. I already have it installed from the Osmo Mobile 3. And don't forget to make sure Bluetooth is enabled on your phone. After booting up the app, some firmware needs to be installed and the new gimbal activated. This required logging in to my DJI account on the app. I guess you could just start a new account if you wanted to. The app takes you through a series of quick start pages with useful information uh, about the basics of using the gimbal. And once through the app installation and gimbal activation, you're ready to start shooting some smooth cinematic video. When powered off, the M button can be tapped once to check the battery level of the gimbal. Well, that's cool. It's nice to be able to quickly check the battery status. Press and hold this M button to power on the gimbal. Tapping the M button twice switches from landscape to portrait and vice versa. The joystick allows you to move the smartphone manually, pan and tilt. Like the OM3, the joystick has sensitivity control, so if you push it a little bit, the gimbal moves slowly. If you push the joystick fully, the gimbal moves faster. I also like the feel of the new joystick in the OM4. It has a, a grippy center, which makes the slow gimbal pan or tilt easier to achieve. The shutter button allows you to take a photo or start video recording, depending on the mode the app is in. If you press and hold in photo mode, you get a photo burst. You know, like many pictures all taken at once. Okay, the slider at the side of the gimbal handle can be used to zoom in and out. The trigger has a number of functions. So if you press and hold, you will enter lock mode and the camera will remain facing the same way no matter where you turn the gimbal. Release to exit lock mode. If you just press it once, you can start or stop active track. Press the trigger twice to recenter the camera and press it three times to switch between front and rear cameras. Now press it twice but hold on the second press to enter sport mode and this makes the gimbal react faster. The DJI OM4 uses the same MIMO app as the Osmo Mobile 3 and other DJI devices. If you've already been using the MIMO app, then there won't be too many surprises here. I was curious to see if the app functioned any differently, depending on which gimbal it was connected to, and the answer is, well, no. It looks like the app works exactly the same for both the OM3 and the OM4, so essentially you get all the same features. Of the gimbal apps I've tried, the DJI DJI MIMO app is the best in my opinion. There seems to be very few glitches and the features and functions all work pretty smoothly. If you watch my OM3 tutorial, you'll see me walk through the MIMO story mode. That hasn't changed, although it looks like they've added a few extra templates. There's also a new clone me mode, which allows you to take a panoramic photo where the same person appears multiple times. That's a feature that's been around for a while on other devices, but is now included in the MIMO app. The active track works really well, especially when combined with gesture control, and this makes it easier to film yourself and track yourself moving around the frame.
Select story mode and then choose the template you find fits the subject of your video. It looks like they've added a few ones since the last time I used the app. You can also create your own choosing shot length and camera moves for each shot. And once you set it running, you will see the shots and their length set out at the bottom. Your task is to fill each of these shots and the app will edit them together at the end with the music. And this is one I grabbed in our garden without too much thought, just to test it out. My shots were pretty ordinary, to be honest, but the edit, the music and the transitions combine to make the whole thing yeah, almost watchable. Select Pano on the right menu, then tap the Pano icon on the left, which opens up four options. Select the coloured Clone Me icon on the right of those options. Tap the big white button and if you're doing this alone, run round to get into the shot. The app and gimbal now take three shots, left, center and right. You have to try to position yourself within the white lines in this central box for the stitching to work best. Otherwise you might find part of your clone is missing, like a hand or a foot. <clears throat> well, I managed it first go, so it can't be too difficult, I guess. To shoot time-lapse video, select the time-lapse mode. Now at the top of the screen you will get some time-lapse settings, length of time between shots and how long you want the gimbal to keep going, shooting your time-lapse. Then the icon on the right, if you select that, you can set it to move during the capture process. So if you want the movement, enable that by tapping the icon on the right. Of those settings now use the joystick to get your first angle tap the plus button and now move the gimbal again to set the next point you can set up to four points if you just want a simple pan for example you just need to set two points the start and the finish so hit the record button and leave the om4 and mimo app to do its magic So not too much difference between the OM3 and the OM4, however I do think there's a slight improvement. The motors are also said to be a little bit stronger, allowing up to 230 plus or minus 60 grams maximum payload. So the top end would be 290 grams, I mean this plus and minus thing is a bit vague isn't it? It's more than the OM3 which is 200 plus or minus 30 grams. But in general, magnetic mounting aside, the two models work pretty much the same. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful or entertaining, um, please like and subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and I'll see you in the next video.